Funiman is a name that I'm sure everyone watching this video has at least heard once in their lifetime. From game and film adaptations to references in media, such as being the inspiration behind a Law and Order episode and a Supernatural episode, being connected to the near-fatal stabbing of a 12-year-old in 2014, amongst many other things. On June 26th of this year, the game Slender the Eight Pages, which was many people's introductions to Slenderman, turns 10 years old. Slenderman is the name given to a fictional figure seen in creepypasta in horror games, who is usually depicted as a freakishly tall faceless figure with a suit, tie, and of course tentacles. Almost every adaptation of Slenderman has some sort of differences from one another, but almost all of them have those same parts in common. This video will go over the story of how the aforementioned character went from a simple creepy photo made for a contest to being a pop culture icon. Before I explain the full backstory behind the Slenderman's origins, I have to explain what the website Something Awful is. Something Awful, usually referred to as SA, is a pretty old school comedy website mostly known for its forums. The website has been around since 1999 and was most popular during the early 2000s. On June 8th of 2009, a user going by this username started a thread on the Something Awful forums about making fake paranormal images with Photoshop. Two days and many eerie images later, a user by the name of Victor Surge would reply to the original poster, with two images and a short backstory for each. In the second photo's backstory, the term Slenderman is first coined. These two grayscale photos, supposedly being taken in the mid-1980s of groups of children with a tall faceless figure in a suit being visible in the background of each, quickly gained attention not long after they were posted. This is where the trait of Slenderman targeting children also came from, as one of the photo's backstory says, notable for being being taken the day which 14 children vanished, and for what is referred to as the Slenderman. In later pages of the thread, Victor Surge would return not only to make more photos, but give even more backstory. This is where the Slenderman being most commonly found in foggy forest areas trope came from too. The thread would slowly steer off topic and instead almost entirely focus on the Slenderman photos and backstory. The photos and backstory were very much inspired by the works of H.P. Lovecraft, the Mothman legend, Stephen King's stories, and even the Rake's story, which was gaining notoriety on something awful and similar form websites by that time. Surge, whose real name is Eric, actually admitted that the original photos were made in just about 15 minutes, and the others in the thread basically just ran off with it. One of my favorite replies in this thread was made by Moosey Fate, and says, I love this type of thing, something just feels satisfying about causing mass hysteria. I think we could roll with this Slenderman thing, maybe if we make enough images and maybe if some talent can make fake videos, it can grow to ARG proportions, minus the advertising. Consider me on board, I could do some sound design things. It was very clear that even this early on, people realized the potential that Slenderman had as an urban legend, whether Victor Surge intended it or not, which in this case, he didn't. On the 18th of June 2009, a reply would be made which told a story about a film named Marble Hornets. Later, two YouTube video links would be posted by the same user, one named Introduction, and the next being Entry Number One. Marble Hornets was the first introduction to Slenderman and the Slenderman mythos for many people. Marble Hornets was an ARG, or alternative reality game, which was mostly hosted on YouTube created by Troy Wagner with the help of others. The series had a three-season run on YouTube and lasted from June 20th, 2009 to June 20th, 2014. The series started only 10 days after the Slenderman myth was created. This series was also the first adaptation of Slenderman to introduce the common trope of distortion on nearby cameras video footage, which would later be seen in the Slender games. On the Something Awful form thread where the Slenderman myth was born, a link to a YouTube video was posted. This video was the introduction entry to the Marble Hornets series. The introduction video uploaded prior to the first entry of Marble Hornets starts off with Jay Merrick talking about an unfinished film project made for his school by his friend Alex. The film was named Marble Hornets and production of said film abruptly stopped only three months after it started, with the crew assisting him complaining of his increasing levels of stress and irritability. The tapes 
tapes of unedited footage were left behind in Jay's possession, with Alex advising him to burn the tapes. Jay decides to start going through said videotapes years later, which leads to Jay finding out that Alex developed severe paranoia due to a figure known as the Operator throughout the series look familiar, and that most of the tapes weren't related to Marble Hornets at all, instead trying to document the operator, and attempting to catch him on camera. As Jay progresses through the tapes, the operator starts to target Jay instead of Alex, and Jay does the same, uploading his tapes as entries to the Marble Hornets YouTube channel. There are a total of 133 videos connected to the Marble Hornets series, some unlisted and some being uploaded to a YouTube account named To The Ark instead. In 2015, just about a year after the series had finished, a theatrically released film adaptation of Marble Hornets named Always Watching a Marble Hornets Story was released, and it was met with not very good reactions. <laughs> Following Marble Hornets, many other Slenderman related series on YouTube and online ARGs were created, including but not limited to Tribe 12, Everyman Hybrid, Dark Harvest 00, and many more. The three I mentioned never really achieved as much popularity as Marble Hornets did, but they're still notable enough to mention. In October of 2011, the website 64 Digits held a contest named Scary 4 Digits 2011. As a part of the annual Scary 4 Digits contest that 64 Digits held, the purpose is very simple, make and submit the scariest, most horrific PC game in existence. After 23 days, people would vote on the best games. There were many different prizes for each ranking you could get, such as $55, a gift card on Amazon for $6.66, one Bitcoin, Amnesia The Dark Descent and Penumbra donated on Steam, and various other prizes. One entry to this contest was a Slenderman game created by Green Meteor Team, founded by Zachary Helm. The game came out over 7 months before Slender the 8 Pages by Parsec Productions, and is usually credited as being the first ever Slenderman based horror game, although it's much more Marble Hornets based than Slender the 8 Pages is, with things like watchable videotapes scattered throughout the map, and Masky from Marble Hornets making an appearance in the game. The game starts with your car breaking down on the road in the middle of nowhere, close to you is a house where most of the gameplay will take place. The house and the land around it have a bunch of collectible items, such as VCR tapes that will give you directions on where to go next. There are quite a bit of objectives in the game, such as when you have to chase a crow to get a key, which leads to a locked room with a handgun in it. One thing you'll notice pretty quickly when playing the game is that the graphics are not exactly great. If the creator of this game had a bit more time to work on it, I think the final result could have been a lot better. A lot of the graphics and animations are certainly interesting. It's definitely an interesting game. The first of many Slender games, and I do mean many. On June 26, 2012, Mark J. Hadley released the first version of Slender the Eight Pages, at the time known as just Slender, through Parsec Productions, based on the Slenderman mythos. In the game, you are just thrown into a forest with a simple objective, collect all eight pages. The game was incredibly minimalistic in comparison to literally every other horror game that was coming out at the time. No GUI in the earliest public version, there wasn't even a title screen, there wasn't any backstory or anything, just you the forest, a flashlight, and of course Slenderman. All you hear for the majority of gameplay are crickets, leaves crunching beneath you, and booming background ambience that will slowly become louder and more layered as you progress through the game. All you have is a flashlight and all you can do to survive is run and collect pages with cryptic drawings relating to the Slenderman on them. The game took the internet by storm in the following weeks as it was completely different from anything else coming out of the indie horror game scene at the time. This was so long ago that the most popular horror game 
game out there was Amnesia The Dark Descent. Most of its popularity can be attributed to the already growing Let's Play video format on YouTube and reaction videos based on the game, which were incredibly popular back then. For some days after the game initially blew up, the site went down after too many people had been trying to download the game at once, with most people having to download the game off shady mirrors and re-upload links, which did nothing but add to the ominousness and mystery of the game. This premise of being thrown into a location with very little story and being told to collect certain things to escape was very influential on the indie horror game genre. Another thing worth mentioning about the game are the two different modes that were implemented into the game in future updates. The daytime mode is a pretty simple concept, the pitch black night forest is no longer an issue as this mode lets you play Slender of the Eight Pages in broad daylight. The other mode was $20 mode, which is essentially the same as the normal game, except the song $20 by Ron Browse starts playing when Slenderman approaches you. This mode was removed in later versions of the game due to copyright related reasons. The $20 mode was replaced by the Marble Hornets mode where the booming game ambience and page collecting noises are removed and a thin line of static outlines the screen. Sun of the Eight Pages blew up in every way after its release. Videos were being made on it by essentially anyone with a functioning computer and a camera or a screen recorder of some sort. Its popularity made it easy for budding YouTubers to look at the funny tall white man and go, ah! and receive popularity because of it. With the YouTube subgenre of gaming Let's Play videos, specifically with horror games, already seeing a rise in popularity at around that same era due to games like Amnesia The Dark Descent and Cry of Fear. This format of YouTube videos was easy to do and easy to get popular because of, and many would strike while the iron was hot because of it. It's no doubt that Slender the Eight Pages has a giant mark on the horror game genre, with many fan games and blatant ripoffs being released following its release. It's minimalist approach was something that had not been done by many before and was something that it definitely didn't get right, leaving room for future indie game developers to try and perfect it themselves. While the game itself, especially now, is far from perfect in any way, it laid the groundwork for many horror games to come, basically shifting the meaning of horror game for a lot of people. In the same time period, both the Slenderman mythos and the game would end up going mainstream, with appearances and references in TV shows and other media. This was coupled with the fact that Slenderman was incredibly popular on YouTube during the same time period of around 2012 to 2014, with many people making theories, fan-made ARGs, let's plays, and even sighting videos. The three most notable Slenderman related fan games to have been released following the popularity of Slender the Eight Pages are Slenderman Shadow, Slendy Tubbies, and Slender Rising. Slenderman Shadow is a spin off series created by Mark Steen and Ray Burgess, which consists of nine different maps, all of which consist of you collecting X amount of a certain item while trying to avoid Slenderman at all costs. Each of these maps were released between August of 2012 and January of 2013. Slenderman Shadow was especially popular amongst YouTubers as they could just churn out gameplays of each individual game in the series. Slendy Tubbies is yet another iconic Slender fan game and certainly an interesting one. Slendy Tubbies is exactly what it sounds like. The game combines both the atmosphere and gameplay mechanics of Slender the Eight Pages with the characters from the kids TV show Teletubbies. The game revolves around collecting 10 bowls of custard from inside a forest while being chased by Tinky Winky. This game is developed by Zeoworks and published in late 2012. There were also sequels released in the following years, which built onto the original game. Slender Rising is a relatively popular Slender fan game that was released for iOS devices in 2013, and is probably the most popular Slender mobile adaptation that exists, and isn't that terrible for a mobile horror game. In this game, you collect signs with the help of an arrow that will point you in the direction of each sign. There are four maps in the game, Desolate Town, Lost Ward, Cursed Ruins, and Haunted Forest. There are a lot of Sun of the Eight Pages fan games or direct clones that are out there that I didn't mention in this section, with some of them being pretty decent and most of them being pretty terrible.
Slender of the Arrival is the less iconic but commercialized and fleshed out version of Slender of the Eight Pages. The game was essentially what Slender of the Eight Pages wanted to be, but couldn't be, as the game is much more fully developed and even has a backstory as to why you were in the forest collecting pages in the first place. This game was released in March of 2013 on Windows and Mac computers by Blue Isle Studios, with the help of Parsec Productions and the writers behind Marble Hornets on board. You play as Lauren, and the game starts out with you driving to your friend Kate's home, except there was a tree blocking the way, so you have to walk the rest of the way. After receiving a call asking for help moving out, you arrive and the place is in shambles with drawings of Slenderman everywhere. This realization is followed by a scream in the forest, and you go out there to investigate. The game has 10 different chapters, starting with prologue, followed by the 8 pages, Into the Abyss, Flashback, Memories, Escape, Homestead, The Arrival, and Genesis. Also, the secret chapter glitch. The game received relatively mixed reviews upon release, with many criticizing the repetitive gameplay consisting of repeating mundane tests throughout most of the game, and the monsters in the game being incredibly difficult to evade. It's very clear the game is much more based on its jump scares, storytelling, and suspense buildup than gameplay mechanics. On May 31st, 2014, a man riding his bike in Waukesha, Wisconsin, would stumble upon 12-year-old Peyton Lautner with 19 stab wounds across her body, laying down on a patch of grass. This discovery was the result of something that two 12-year-old girls had been planning for over half a year, the stabbing of one of their closest friends in an attempt to appease the Slenderman, which Anissa had been reading about for quite some time. The two involved in the stabbing had been found about five miles away from where the incident took place and were apprehended. During interrogation, Anissa claimed it was done in an attempt to become one of Slenderman's proxies and mentioned the creepypasta wiki. Morgan went along with it as she was scared what would happen if she didn't. As Anissa had convinced her that Slenderman was entirely real, Morgan was later diagnosed with early onset schizophrenia. The stabbing victim, Peyton Lautner, made an astonishingly fast recovery, being able to leave the hospital within only seven days and returning to school when the next school year started that September. The doctors who assisted in the recovery told the press that if the blade used, which was 5 inches long, had been any longer, Peyton would have not survived. Morgan Geyser was sentenced to 40 years to life in a mental health institution and was charged with attempted first degree intentional homicide, while Anissa Wire was only sentenced to 25 years to life in a mental health institution and charged with attempted second degree intentional homicide before being released in September of 2021, just seven years later. After the incident, the creator of Slenderman, Victor Surge, would return to tell the press that he was deeply saddened by the tragedy. After Afterwards, the Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker would declare August 13th Purple Hearts for Healing Day and would request Wisconsin citizens to wear purple on that day to honor the victim of the stabbing. Just a week and a half later, on June 9th, 2014, an Ohio mother was attacked by her 13-year-old daughter when she came home from work. This incident, along with the last, was also non-fatal and the 13-year-old was held in a juvenile detention center as a result. After the first incident, countless movies and TV series episodes were inspired by it. Terror in the Woods was a movie inspired by the incident that aired on Lifetime in 2018. The documentary Beware the Slenderman was released on HBO in 2016, and in 2018, the movie titled Slenderman was released. In August of 2018, Sony Pictures released their new feature-length movie, Slenderman. Years after the hype around the urban legend had already died down, the movie revolves around Chloe, Katie, Hallie, and Ren summoning the Slenderman through a ritual they found online. Afterwards, Katie goes missing, and they spend essentially the rest of the movie trying various things to get her back. This movie was met with incredibly negative reception from almost everyone who watched it, and the movie was even blocked from playing in some locations in Wisconsin, as that was the state the previously mentioned 2014 stabbing incident took place in. Many even called the movie distasteful for being released after said incident, with Bill Wyatt, the father of one of the perpetrators of said incident, advising local theaters to not show the film in the first place. The film and its release was a mess. And that's how Slenderman went from a simple photoshopped image, to an urban legend, to a pop culture icon, and then to a cause of concern for parents in just 20 minutes. Thank you for watching.
Thank you.